Allow me to address the reality of the nation we live in. As a nation, we have become dependent on subduing our health issues with pain meds and masking agents. As a nation, we forgot God's design on how to take care of our temple. As a nation, we fall for convenience before carrying the weight of change. That is why the medical industry thrives, because we as a nation are still sick. Doctors are quick to prescribe pills for conditions because they expect that few of us will adhere to healthy lifestyle changes. Americans suffer so, so many diseases due to inactive, sedentary, and immovable lifestyles. Have we gone so far that our minds are also immovable? Or is there hope for this nation? Hope for change, hope for health, hope for future families, hope for, the, for adopting a new sort of life-giving behavior. I know there's more for us, America. God gave us legs, so use them. God gave us, gave us arms, so use them. God gave us a heart, let it beat. God gave us breath, so take a deep one. Let's revitalize ourselves. Exercise will bring a new wave of pill-free, pain-free, and energy-rich longevity. What I am getting at is that we should default to exercise as our primary method to prevent chronic disease before taking medications or having surgeries. We can agree to disagree, but unless you like swallowing pills, let's, I say that we should put exercise at the front line of disease prevention. A little bit about my background is I love studying exercise science and I've done it for five years. Reading books on biomechanics and the management of chronic disease was my coffee shop hobby. After I graduated with a degree in kinesiology, I couldn't avoid sports med experts because I just wanted to learn so much from what they had to say. Eventually, I wound up moving to the Olympic Training Center where I became a full-time athlete. There are few things more valuable to me than helping somebody's life improve. Exercise is my life and I want to share it with everyone. I want to warn you that nobody escapes the responsibility of maintaining your health. Neither age, nor gender, nor ethnicity, nor occupation, nor genetics, nor size is an excuse for one to neglect their physical activity. It's for everyone, and we must keep ourselves moving. You can do it however way you prefer. If you like to swim, hike, lift, ride horses, walk your dog, garden, it all applies. Today I will explain how exercising 30 minutes a day instead of utilizing prescription drugs will decrease the nation's medical expenses by minimizing the number of chronically ill Americans. First of all, our nation needs less pharmacotherapy and more physical activity. A health genius whom I studied from in college said something to me that left a long lasting impression. Dr. Marla Walters, a cardiac rehab therapist and professor, would often say, exercise is just as effective as most medications in preventing chronic disease. So, many pharmaceutical drugs are prescribed to, pr to produce the same effects of working out. For example, lisinopril and nitroglycerin both decrease your blood pressure. So does exercise. So why are we spending money on prescriptions when the resolution is as natural as just moving around? So we can pay less on medical bills and take ownership of our health by exercising, or we can throw our health and money out the window as we sit on the couch like a couch potato in hopes that Medicaid drops a magic fix-all pill on our doorstep. We should not wait around until we are too sick to do something. If we can produce a receipt of the, of the nation's medical records and compilation, it would be as long as you stand tall. According to the text, Clinical Exercise Physiology, we observe the following statistics. Consider obesity, costing $146.6 billion a year and affecting 35% of American adults. Consider di diabetes, costing $174 billion a year and affecting 26 million adults. Consider end-stage renal disease costing $39.5 billion a year and affecting 23 million Americans. Consider coronary heart disease resulting, uh, costing the nation $177.5 billion a year and affecting 16.3 million Americans where one-sixth of them had a heart attack and died. 
Consider Alzheimer's costing $236 billion a year, affecting 5.3 million Americans. Is it not worth 30 minutes a day to lessen these numbers? Or do you think that these statistics do not apply to you? Because they do. And what do all these diseases have in common? They all relate to sedentary lifestyles. The risk factor shared by each and every one of them is an inactivity. So there are so many benefits to exercise. According to the ACSM, exercise causes a decrease in blood pressure and heart rate and bad cholesterol. If Yoda had a comment, it would be, pills we take not, side effects we have not. That's why we should go the natural route. It's amazing that the body has this design to heal itself. Exercise will increase our immunities, our demeanor, our social relationships, and give us energy to play with our kids and our grandkids. There is something in it for everyone, and everyone can benefit. In this chart from the American College of Sports Medicine, they show the relationship between mortality and physical fitness. Okay. The participants who improve from the unfit group on the far left here to the fit group on the far right had a 44% decrease in mortality. For every minute increased in activity, increased in activity, an 8% decrease in mortality risk resulted. And a 10% body weight reduction resulted in a 40% better chance of survival for those who had obese, obesity. And a 30% better chance of survival for those who had diabetes. Wow. So where do we begin in the gym? Currently, the U.S. Fitness Standards is still the 2008 Guidelines for Exercise Prescription for Improved Health. In summary, they say that aerobic exercise is recommended at 30 minutes a day for five days a week at moderate intensity which could be a light walk to a jog or 25 minutes a day for three days a week at vigorous intensity which would be a slow jog to a run so what better day to start than today okay I understand that this fitness plan is for the basis of general uh, general people to start in the gym however there are some exceptions to this plan for instance for people who are bedridden or physically impaired we can make some modifications to accommodate with with those who have special cases for instance a health professional will have a person ingest a drug that will make their heart race and simulate exercise while another person is manually assisting them in moving their joints so that they're also simulating exercise for them. So yes, there is a place for medication, but never should medication replace exercise 100%. Instead, they should be combined together. Exercise will speed up the recovery of any comorbid diseases and also slow the progression of the disease. In conclusion, we can exercise as a method of preventing chronic disease or we can subdue a pre-existing chronic disease through exercise. So, the less physically active we are, the more likely we are to develop chronic disease. Since 33% of Americans are sedentary and 40% are diagnosed with chronic disease, there is most likely a correlation between inactivity and being sick, according to the National Health Council. Therefore, we should invest in our health through exercising and avoiding taking medications as often as possible. Medications are overprescribed. After utilizing one drug, you have two or three more to counter the side effects of the first one. This ever-growing snowball of medications will no longer be our fate. Let us break the chain. Altogether, we are responsible and together, we can reduce the rise of our national medical expenses and instead rise up ourselves with change. Let us say no to prescription drugs as often as we can. We can improve our overall physical health. Fellow Americans, we deserve to live long and fulfilled lives. We must live active lives and depend less on pharmaceutical drugs.